Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Max here again with another video. And in today's video, I want to talk about why I ignore most women. You see, whether I'm going to work or whether I'm, you know, going to a restaurant to eat, whenever I come across a woman, I tend to ignore the vast majority of them. And the reasoning is because I believe that most women have an overinflated ego about themselves where to the point where even the most average woman thinks that she's super attractive, that she's a queen, that she thinks she's a boss or, you know, a bad bitch or whatever. And I just flat out ignore them. Now, I don't do anything awkward like, you know, not look at them or, you know, be socially awkward. No, I look at them, but I look through them. You see, I look at them as if their existence means nothing to me or I can care less that she's standing there. But what most guys do is they, when they see an attractive woman, they look at them with lust in their eyes, like the I want to have sex with you eyes. And what this does is it validates a woman. It tells her, oh, he finds me attractive. I'm worthy. And what this does in return for you is that it places you below her. So if she thinks that she's better than you because you're into her, this places you as a peasant in her eyes. So not only does she already think that she's a queen, but when you show interest in her, she thinks that you're a peasant. She thinks you're a low-value man. So what I do instead is whenever I see a woman in public, I just go about my day. I'm not even instinctively thinking about them. I just do my own thing. You know, like if I'm standing in line at Chipotle and I want to get food and there's another beautiful woman, I just look at her like as if she was a man, as if she was a little kid, like somebody who I have no interest in. And, and what in return, what this does is that it causes her to think, oh, wow, why does this, is this guy not interested in me? Why is this seemingly average guy not interested in me? And when I say average, I mean in terms of looks, because I'm not average in everything else. I'm, you know, I'm really tall. I'm about 6'4". Um, I'm in decent shape, a little bit overweight, but uh, in decent shape. And so she thinks to herself, why is this average looking guy ignoring me? Is there something wrong with me? And so she starts to doubt herself. So I flipped a switch on her to the point where not only have I ruined that holier than thou attitude that that woman probably had because I've treated her like a commoner. I've treated her like she's nothing, you know, like just a regular person. But also what I've noticed is that when I do this, when I ignore women, they seem to just like want to try to get my attention. Even if they were initially not interested in me, what they do is they try to get my attention. We all know that if you ignore women, that they'll want you more, even if it's not real. You know, if, if they didn't want you before, if you ignore her, she's going to think, oh, why is he not interested in me? And start chasing after you. And I've noticed this numerous times, whether I was looking directly at her or whether I've noticed, you know, from my peripheral vision that if I look at her and then just look away normally, you know, when I stare at her, just look through her, that in my peripheral vision, I can see her fixing herself up. I can see her adjusting her clothes. I can see her try to look at me and see if I will look back at her just to get my attention. And what I've done is essentially destroy her ego because the vast majority of guys that she's come across and who she will come across are either going to look at her, you know, very in a very thirsty manner or B, they're going to try to talk to her and eventually either get shut down or the 10% of guys who she finds attractive are going to get her number. So what you do when you ignore a woman is you stand out from the pack. You differentiate yourself from the beta males. So instinctively, you place yourself on a higher level, on a higher value level, and you make yourself come across as a high value man. And I mentioned before that I don't do this purposely. It's just the way I am now where I over the years, I've evolved from a beta male where I was obsessed with women who were I believed in all this love crap and all this marriage and all this stuff to the point where women mean nothing to me because I'm focused on myself. You know, recently I became a millionaire about two years ago and I'm focused on becoming a multimillionaire and focused on becoming even more wealthier. So women are pretty much on the back burner. I'm, I'm focused on myself and trying to build my wealth, trying to build my power. And I know that if I work on myself and I go from an 8 or I go from a 7 to a 10, 
that I don't even need to approach women, that they'll just come to me. You know, there's an old saying that says, you'll always lose money chasing women, but you'll never lose women chasing money. And I want to reiterate and add the fact that if you work on yourself and you're focused on your own purpose, a legitimate purpose, not some artificial purpose that you've created, such as I want to get in shape so I can attract women, like a true purpose, like I want to become successful, I want to become the future president, I want to become, you know, something huge, and I don't have time for distractions, then what happens is eventually they'll start chasing you. You see, high value men, they don't act thirsty, high value men that are successful, they don't revolve their life around women and think, oh, I'm going to try to get women, I'm going to try to buy a nice car and all this stuff to attract women. No, but what instead they do is they focus on themselves, they become wealthy and rich, and women are on the back burner. A lot of these really wealthy entrepreneurs and these go-getters and these men with high testosterone and high drive, they treat women like a secondary or a third thing in their life. They don't treat them like a primary thing that most men that have nothing but try to come across as having everything try to do. And to add to all this, I want to say that I've also noticed that sometimes when I'm in public, you know, this was a few years ago when I used to do this, but anytime I was in public and I noticed a woman looking at me, and whenever I tried to reciprocate that, even though she was showing interest in me initially, whenever I try to go and say hi to her, she says, oh, I have a boyfriend. Or she says, you know, oh, I'm not interested. Even though initially, like, I was just minding my own business, doing nothing, just focusing on my purpose, you know, just walking about life, focused on what I'm doing. But this attractive woman looks at me and gives me, like, oh, you know, like, the come hither stare or whatever. And then I reciprocate. Then all of a sudden, they're not interested. Because they're always looking for the opportunity to get your attention and then reject you or dismiss you. As if you're nothing. You see, a lot of women have this mentality that they think that most men are worthless and peasants. That if you're not in the top 20% of men, that you shouldn't even bother trying to talk to them. They'll still want your non-sexual attention. They'll still want you to look at them. They still want you to, you know, give them attention and text them and all these different things. But at the end of the day, this she doesn't want you sexually like she does a Chad or a Tyrone or any other guy who's in the top 20% of men in terms of looks. And I cannot begin to tell you guys how far along my life has come when I discovered this secret of just ignoring most women. Just ignore them and focus on yourself. Honestly, ever since I started ignoring most women, my life has gotten better because I focused more on myself. Before, you know, five or six years ago when my life was going nowhere, I was working a dead-end retail job and trying to attract women when I had nothing, I would flirt with them and they would reciprocate, they would flirt back, but it would never go past that stage of flirt. It would never go to the stage where I would have sex with her most of the time. So really, when you start ignoring them and you focus on yourself, your life is going to change in so many different ways, whether it's financially, whether it's health-wise because you're working out more and you're focused on getting healthier, or any other aspect of life, especially financially, because you're not spending money and time trying to attract women. You're not going out there leasing cars you can't afford. You're not buying expensive luxury brand clothing. You're not doing any of this extra stuff to try to attract women. So what instead what you do is you save more money and invest in your future. And you know what the worst part is that there are actually guys who spend the vast majority of their youth chasing women, spending money on women by trying to impress women, by leasing cars, by buying expensive clothes, and doing all this extra stuff to attract women, or attempt to attract women. And they wasted their money that they could have used to improve themselves, or they wasted money that they could have invested to get a higher return and become financially free. And a lot of times what happens is down the road, you know, years down the road when they're 40 or 50 or 60, they're still a loser because they never gotten past that point where 
they can put women on the back burner and focus on themselves and work on themselves by A, improving their health, B, not spending unnecessary money on women and trying to impress them by chasing after them, and C, not investing money to create more money because, you know, it takes money to create more money and, you know, make more money. And so they failed in this very basic thing throughout their entire life. They lived their, they lived their entire lives being mediocre and not accomplishing anything, not becoming financially free. And they're 40 to 50 years old and they're still working a dead-end 9-to-5 job or they're working a dead-end warehouse job or whatever, you know? But at the same time, they're driving a luxury car or they're driving a muscle car that's expensive, like 20K, 30K, which a lot of times they're either leasing or financing, both of which means you can't afford it. Because if you can't afford to pay for it with cash twice, then you can't afford it. I think it was Jay-Z who said that if you can't afford to pay for something three times, then you can't really afford it. And it's so true. And it's the same reason why not just men, but the average American, whether you're man or female, is living paycheck to paycheck. I think uh, I read somewhere that over 70% of people in the United States can't even afford a $1,000 emergency. Most people are living paycheck to paycheck because they waste their money on things that they don't need. These are things that they want, you know, like a TV or a car that they can't afford in order to impress somebody at a stoplight that they've never met before and they're going to only see them for 10 seconds. Oh, I impressed a stranger at a stoplight. Even if you do manage to impress somebody with your leased car or your financed car, you're impressing people that are in the same exact situation as you, people that are in debt, people that are in the same cycle as you that don't understand that cars are depreciating assets, that cars lose value. I used to work at a car dealership and they used to drive in us this idea that once a customer drives the car off the lot, that there's no way that we can take it back. We don't accept returns because once you drive it off the lot, it loses at least 20% of its value right then and there. Cars are massive depreciating assets and I wouldn't even call it an asset, I would call it a liability because it costs you money. You have to pay money to maintain it. You have to pay money in order to keep up with the upkeep on the car to make sure it's running properly. It doesn't make you money, it costs you money. And so you see a lot of these guys that spend a lot of their hard-earned money on muscle cars or they spend their money on luxury cars by leasing or financing a car, which they couldn't afford to begin with, they're wasting a lot of money that they could have used on themselves to improve themselves. Imagine what would happen if you took that few grand that you spend on car payments, you know, at least five grand to 15 grand, and instead you use that money to invest in seminars, or you you use that money to invest in courses that teach you how to become a better salesman, or it teaches you how to become a better closer and close the deal and make more money. So you wasted so much money that could have made you more money long term on women, women who don't even care about you. Like, let's say you attract a woman because of your car. Do you think she likes you for you? No, of course not. She likes you for your car, your car, which you don't even own. So let's say, for example, you come across some financial hardship and you lose that money. Maybe you go bankrupt. Maybe you lose your job and you can't afford to make the payments anymore. And she was only there because you had the car or maybe she was there because you had the house that you couldn't afford that you got a subprime mortgage on. Do you think she's going to be around when you lose all that stuff? Hell no. So it's not a good idea to try to attract women with material objects because they're not, they don't like you for you. They like you for your things. And if you spend money you don't have to try to impress people that don't even like you, then you're never going to get past that, you know, repetitive cycle of being in debt and never becoming financially free. And that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And until next time, max out.